Hey everyone, what's going on? Welcome back. Today we're going to be going over some of the statistics of current job market availability as far as positions. How does the market look like as far as landing a job? How much experience you need? I think as time goes on, the unfortunate thing is that people with lesser or fewer experience or any experience whatsoever is becoming more and more difficult to land that cybersecurity job because a lot of these positions even though they're saying it's for beginners or entry level are still requiring certain years of experience and that unfortunately really really sucks almost equivalent of eating mcdonald fries during a video it's not good for you but you kind of just have to suck it up sometimes and just go through with it you gotta deal with it Send me your resumes. Let me look it over. Let me see if I can help you to accomplish and get this role that you're trying to look for. A few of you have been reaching out to me and I looked over your resume and you guys have no experience whatsoever in the field of cybersecurity. But trust me, I'm going to help you highlight the things that you are good at and potentially get you a position or at least get you through the interview to sit through a few interviews to get you up to speed on the type of questions that are being asked of this position entry level mid whatever it is but we're gonna get right on right now I want to show you guys cyberseek it's a heat map of current jobs and the most interesting thing is that it's saying that there is a national average of 85 percent meaning right here the national average is 85 percent meaning that there is only enough cybersecurity workers in the United States to fill 85 percent of the cybersecurity jobs employers are um, in demand meaning it's only filling up to 85 percent now this number can be a little skewed and maybe it's not accurate maybe a good percentage of those positions are chief level director levels and obviously you and i would probably do not want to consider those roles into cybersecurity because those are more business oriented roles opposed to technical challenging dealing with the sim or working in the SOC group. Yes, you do have to know all that while sitting in those higher positions, but your day-to-day -day operations is definitely not focused on how to do things or what to do. It's more of delegating and making sure that the individuals under them are going to be able to perform the work and then you assess them and then you do one-on-ones and then you do performance reviews. So a lot of factors. Uh, into the more managerial side of things so I don't know specifically this national average is actually showing or saying that it is part of that and let's blow this up a little bit so right now there is definitely a good amount of jobs that are still available now this number was definitely a lot higher previously but mind you this is not showing you currently where the layoffs are it's just asking for the demand of how much jobs are still available in the current market now if we start comparing this to the amount of layoffs or the one for ones that are being laid off and then being you know people are rehiring at a lower salary which i have been noticing average of certain positions and salaries have been going down so definitely not the best thing for enticing newcomers to join the cybersecurity realm, you know, studying it for the masters or taking more certifications only to come out to make less than expected in this current market. Let's go over some of the jobs that we are seeing and the ranges that are being offered. Now, this is on Indeed. Usually I, I will pull up, you know, LinkedIn, but let's focus on Indeed right now. Here, I mean, these are senior positions. The ranges are just so wide, right? So this is for JetBlue Airway Corporation. Uh, if you guys don't know what that is, that is the airline uh, in here in Long Island City. I'm in, I'm situated in New York. So this would be a very close proximity going into the office, hybrid, remote kind of a situation. But again, the, the salary range is just very, very, you know, wide. Like, how do you someone fit into this particular criteria? So they do take a bunch of factors into all this, meaning your years of experience, the type of certifications you have, the type of uh, education, whether you have a master's or just a bachelor's, 
So they start factoring all that in. But at the same time, I can never even predict where the percentage increases. Meaning, let's just say I have a master's at NYU, for instance. Does that automatically give me a 20% bump in my salary if I was offered a position? You know what I mean? So it's kind of hard to say. You kind of have to get the feel for it. Most of the times, I would say the numbers are there to just entice you. But at the same time, it's not realistic for some of these positions because seniors probably are not making over 200 grand compared to directors or deputy directors or even certain CISOs in some organizations. Just saying. You guys may come back and say, well, no, I know this person. He's well, well over 200,000 and he's only a senior or... Uh, you know, senior engineer, this and that. I'm not saying it's not possible, but more rare than common. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, I mean, they, there's definitely a good amount of jobs are still there. The vast majority of the salary ranges are wide, but also anticipate when you apply for these type of positions that it's usually towards the lower end of the range and what they kind of throw in there to compensate for the higher range is like oh maybe stock options maybe bonuses your base pay would be the lower end but then you know as the years progress you know you you'll get these different bonuses depending on performance that also is not definite bonuses are never definite they could also come back within that year end and say well we weren't performing so well so you're not going to be getting a higher bonus than anticipated because it'll never be in writing. Been there, done that. A lot of lead positions. And I, I don't want to throw you guys off. Let, let's look for, let's start a search and look for something that's a little more intermediate. Uh, we'll look at cyber, uh, cyber entry level. Uh, we, could, we could look in Brooklyn, New York, or we can just look in New York in general. And let's see what comes up. Let's look at what entry level positions look like. Now, 75 to 85 dollars is, is pretty damn good actually um and i i think i i kind of know what this company is uh for 85 dollars but this is a contract job so you just have to make sure if it's a contract job you're not getting a lot of benefits as a full-time employee and your contract can practically end at any time so it's not a full-time employment you don't have the perks or uh, in this case, probably you wouldn't have the, the protections as most full-time employees. Uh, most importantly, benefits, health, dental, you know, all that good stuff that comes with full-time employees. Uh, especially if you take any days off, like not go in for vacation, whatever, you're not getting paid those that time. All right. So there's the difference there. And again, it almost seems like it, it doesn't even matter if I put entry level or not. It, it just comes up with these high paying jobs like what's going on over here so oh bank of china this is uh, uh, wow look at this range it's like forty two thousand to one hundred fifty thousand. dollars like what where where is this coming from a lot of contract work i'm noticing for entry level for some reason but you know 72 to 75 dollars an hour is definitely pretty pretty uh i would say attractive but remember you're not getting a lot of benefits so you do need health benefits and all the other stuff you have to pay that on your own your tax deduction has to be done on your own so they're not doing it for you if, if you land a consultant position so yeah here he says full-time contract eight hour shifts in person uh let's find something that that's not contract right and that looks actually somewhat attractive for an entry-level person to join maybe this one direct console data piracy and cybersecurity attorney that sounds pretty deep i don't think i want to touch that one either wow this isn't really not much right now is it huh it says actually you know what let's expand our horizon to 100 miles and still keep it under entry level cert incident handler that looks pretty okay full-time pay information not provided so you don't even know how much they're offering most people including myself if i don't see a salary range i probably will not touch that either meaning it just seems like eh, why, why why what's the big deal of advertising what you're willing to pay for this position opposed to making it such a big mystery hmm yeah i'm not seeing a lot of nice positions. I mean, incident management specialist. 
I'm not sure. I mean, that kind of falls into the cybersecurity, but eh, not going too crazy about that one. I definitely wouldn't consider that. Even for myself looking at this, uh, looking for entry level positions on Indeed, you can see that it's challenging just to find a position to apply for because we're scrolling through here and we're not seeing anything that we want to apply to. Right, we we came across this one, a uh, data privacy, uh, secure, cybersecurity attorney. And, uh, I have no idea what that even requires you to know. Bar required, so I definitely don't have that. And uh, if you're in cybersecurity, probably you're not having, you don't have the bar <laughs> either. Uh, I don't know. So one of two pages. Let's see what's on the second page. Maybe indeed is not for us. So. I don't know what it is, guys. I, I just find it that it, it's uh, unfortunately I don't use Indeed as much as I do with LinkedIn. But let's you know just let's just check out LinkedIn. I'll do another video on unemployment on the tech sector because cybersecurity falls under the tech sector. Uh, that would be a good analysis of what's out there compared to how many people you're going against as far as people getting laid off. Now, it doesn't really define how much people are getting laid off from just cybersecurity specifically because IT is a combination of a lot of people and a lot of different departments that make up IT, cybersecurity being one of them. Let's just go really quickly. I just want to do a cyber check uh, in New York City uh, and then I will, I will select experience level, uh, entry level or even an associate. And I just want to show you guys right now what's going on. I am not seeing a lot of attractive positions here. This is all within the United States, not even specifically anything within New York. Cybersecurity consultant, cybersecurity engineer remote, token metrics. This looks pretty interesting, but then they're not posting the salary. I I don't get it, guys. I don't get it. Now, New York has a requirement that you do have to post salaries i well let me take that back new york state city agencies has a requirement of being transparent and posting salary ranges private organization not as much we're seeing that firsthand right now a lot of people are hiring the salaries why is that i'm not sure i don't know why if you happen to come across this yourself and it's being challenging to apply for positions because you have a feeling that they're going to lowball you. I think this is the beginning of a new trend where they are trying to assess the value of these positions and they may start lowering the salaries because they know the competition is stiff. There's a lot of people who are on the market right now and there's a lot of people prior to being, you know, part of this whole tech layoff is that you know, like individuals like yourself who just came out of school or transitioning over from another field or another profession, you're competing with these individuals. And this market is so saturated that now the employers have a say in how much they're willing to offer for these positions. So I just want you guys to be aware that it is very challenging and I, and I know the challenges. I want you guys to just comment below. Tell me what it is that you're trying to focus on and what you're trying to accomplish. Also, if you really want, email me and let me know. I can definitely sit through. Uh, I've sat through with a few people going through their resumes and trying to, you know, bring it up to speed, uh, bringing keywords up to the front, up to the top. So it's more enticing. People are more attracted to it and potentially getting you at least a call for an interview and sitting through that so you could go through your full learning experience on how to sit through interviews. Just an FYI, from my point of view, I have sourced, go through hundreds and hundreds of resumes, looking for candidates, sitting through interviews. And personally on my side, to even create a channel like this, I have gone through, wow, I would say I've lost track of how many interviews I've gone through some were so organized, some were just dysfunctional. And I combined all that as a huge learning experience to share with you guys. So I appreciate you guys always being here. Please hit that like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys again really soon. Take care.